Aside from being praised via the Prophet's dreams, Omar was always complimented in the most remarkable manner by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Hisham, he said we were once sat with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he had taken the hand of Umar ibn al-Khattab and placed it within his. Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, la anta ahabbu ilayya min kulli shay'in illa min nafsi. O Messenger of Allah, I swear you are dearer to me than everything except myself. Here we must bear in mind that these words were words of honesty. Many of us claim unconditional love for the Prophet ﷺ, but our actions sometimes prove otherwise. Umar however spoke candidly and the response he received was just as candid. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, لا والذي نفسي بيده حتى أكون أحب إليك من نفسك No, I swear by the one who possesses my soul. It is not until I become more beloved to you than even your very self. That is to say, you will not be able to ascend to the peaks of Iman, faith, until I, the Prophet, become dearer to you than yourself. And so with no hesitation, Umar at once responded, فَإِنَّهُ الْآنِ Then now it is, O Messenger of Allah, وَاللَّهِ لَا أَنْتَ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ نَفْسِي I swear you are now more beloved to me than even my own self. And upon hearing this, the Prophet ﷺ said, الآن يا عمر. It is now, O Umar. Now the Iman of Umar was complete. Now, given that emotions are not controlled by binary switches, it is a reasonable question to ask how Umar was able to bring about such a huge and rapid change within his heart. Imam Al-Khattabi beautifully explained this and he says, The love which one has for himself is instinctive, but the love which one has for others is a conscious choice that we make. The Prophet ﷺ did not request from Umar the instinctive love as no one has control over that and Umar's first response was an expression of his instinctive love. But he quickly came to realize that the Prophet ﷺ was more beloved to him than himself as the Prophet was the cause of his salvation from the harms of this world and the next. And considering this, Umar pronounced his absolute love for the Messenger not out of instinct but out of choice. In other words, Umar recognized that his life in this world and in the hereafter would have been devastated had it not been for the guidance of the Messenger ﷺ. In the same vein, we should ask ourselves, what would we have known about Allah had the Messenger ﷺ not endured the hardships of boycott and ridicule and ostracization and bleeding on the battlefield solely in order to convey the message? Which of Allah's names would we be able to invoke? What would we have known about Allah's attributes? Where would we have turned to during our darkest hours if we did not have his words? How cold and dark would the grave be without the light of prayer which our Prophet ﷺ taught us? How terrifying would the day of reckoning be had we lived in disarray without a criterion? And so it is clear that Prophet Muhammad ﷺ should be more beloved to us than our own selves because through him Allah has taught us how to avoid the misery of a godless life today and the horrors of an eternal fire tomorrow. Back to Umar, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said about Umar ibn al-Khattab, إن الله جعل الحق على لسان عمر وقلبه Allah has placed the truth on the tongue of Umar and on his heart. Now what does this mean? His son, Abdullah, he said, ما نزل بالناس أمر قط فقالوا فيه وقال فيه عمر إلا نزل فيه القرآن على نحو ما قال عمر. He said, never did the people experience a happening wherein they would voice an opinion in its regard. And Umar would voice his opinion except that Qur'an would be revealed confirming the opinion of Umar. How incredible it is that verses from the Most High Allah to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited by billions of people until the last day are confirming the opinion of Umar ibn al-Khattab and at times even matching his exact words. Umar said, وَافَقْتُ رَبِّي فِي ثَلَاثِ My Lord approved of my opinion on three occasions. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوِ اتَّخَذْنَا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى The first occasion was when I once said to the Messenger, O Messenger of Allah, why do we not take the place where Ibrahim stood as a place for prayer? And so Allah revealed a verse from the Qur'an, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Take the station of Ibrahim as a place of prayer. 
The second occasion was when I once said, Ya Rasulullah, if you allowed a woman to be attached to you, then you will call her the bird or the fajr, or messenger of Allah. Why do you not order your wives to cover themselves with the full hijab from the men? Because the good and the bad people talk to them. He said, فَنَزَلَتْ آيَةُ الْحِجَابِ وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعَ The verses of hijab were revealed to the Prophet وسلم, subsequently saying, and if you ask of his wives something, then ask them from behind. A hijab. And the third occasion was when the Prophet's wives banded together in their jealousy over him. And so I, Umar, said to them, Asa Rabbuhu in Talaka kunna ayyubdilahu azwajun khayran min kunna al ayah. It may be that his Lord, if he, the Prophet, divorces you, will give him instead wives who are better than you, submissive to Allah, believing, pious, penitent, worshipping, inclined to fasting, widows and maids. And so the following verse was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, It may be that his Lord, if he divorces you, will give him instead wives better than you, submissive to Allah, believing, pious, penitent, worshipping, inclined to fasting, widows and maids. It was revealed in the words that Umar ibn al-Khattab uttered. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would also say, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي مَا قَبْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأُمَمِ مُحَدَّثُونَ فَإِنْ يَكُ فِي أُمَّتِي أَحَدٌ فَإِنَّهُ عُمَرٌ Among the nations who came before you, there were people who were spoken to, i.e. by angels or through inspiration. They were spoken to. And if there are any such men among my ummah, then Umar ibn al-Khattab is one of them. In fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said, لَوْ كَانَ بَعْدِي نَبِيٌّ لَكَانَ عُمَرٌ If there were to be a Prophet sent after me, he would have been Umar. How can we Muslims possibly find inspiration in any contemporary popular personality, the majority of whom are yet to offer their creator a single prostration? When we have the likes of Umar and others from our history, of whom we are an extension. Times where Muslims take role models from sporting or musical arenas rather than personalities from their own magnificent heritage are sad times indeed. If the lives of all of these so-called stars were combined, their value and achievements would fall short of a single hour in the life of Umar. Are they inspired by angels? Are they carriers of truth that's placed on their tongues and hearts? Are they guaranteed paradise like Umar? Greatness is part of your heritage and you are an extension to that heritage. May Allah be pleased with Umar and may he be pleased with those who strive to become like Umar and to revive the biography of Umar and reserve their admiration for the likes of Umar.